Frank Lampard's tenure at Chelsea has begun with some good football, but less than great results. A high-scoring pre-season which saw plenty of goals scored and conceded while using Lampard's preferred 4-2-3-1 has given way to a less successful start to a competitive football and a return of sorts to Maurizio Sarri's 4-3-3, with Jorginho anchoring midfield. That Lampard should like the 4-2-3-1 is no surprise. It was the preferred setup of the man he probably absorbed most from tactically, Jose Mourinho, and it empowers the sort of energetic pressing style that Lampard seems keen to encourage. This is no doubt part of the reason that Mason Mount, who is familiar with Lampard's ideals after his time at Derby County, is starting. Mount is a dedicated and smart presser who injects energy from midfield, and his role, either as a 10 in the 4-2-3-1 or as an 8-10 hybrid in the 4-3-3, helps set Chelsea's pressing tone. In attack, Chelsea have a clear plan and execute it well. Jorginho drops back to provide a passing option to the centre-backs, while the advanced midfielders and wide attackers try to find a position between the lines in the final third with the centre-forward, either Olivier Giroud or Tammy Abraham, a longer outball. Jorginho or the centre-backs look to effect progressive passes to players who've found space. The wide players tend to tuck in, which is Pedro's natural approach anyway, which means that the full-backs need to push forwards to provide overlaps and width. The wide players look to progress the ball to the overlapping full-backs and then push inside, the aim seems to be to generate whipped, low crosses from these positions, although Chelsea will also play it back through the nearest midfielder should a chance not be generated at the right pace to cause the opposition issues. The outer midfielders vary in role to a degree. Mount pushes up more and looks to profit from Giroud's ability to hold up the ball and play players in with flicks and touches, while Kante has a slightly deeper position to protect Chelsea on the counter. However, he will also push up a lot, and there are similarities to Sarri's style in how Lampard looks to use his two outer central midfielders to offer pass and move options in the half spaces. Chelsea are more direct and quicker under Lampard, while the use of a more traditional centre forward as a focal point does make sense. But defence is where Chelsea have issues, and this is partly because Lampard's attacking, energetic approach leaves them open. The defensive system is extremely demanding, both physically and mentally, and it's no surprise to see Chelsea falling off in games once opposition substitutes have refreshed their attack, and Chelsea's own players are tiring or new to the dynamic of the game. Chelsea look to press from the front quite narrowly, sometimes with Mount the most advanced player and the centre forward slightly behind him, while the fullbacks or wider central midfielders are supposed to push up or cover across if this first line of the press is bypassed. Chelsea then defend mostly in a 4-4-2 or a 4-1-4-1, when they drop off and form a mid or low block, happy to let the opposition pass the ball around in their own defensive third. The wide attackers, the advanced side players in this block, do respond to pressing triggers when the ball is moved wide or miscontrolled, and the central midfielders will also push up and press if Chelsea start to compress the space. While all these triggers make sense, they do leave gaps that need to be filled, especially when the fullbacks follow their man inside. What's clear from watching Chelsea so far this season, especially in their defeat to Manchester United, is that space appearing in the midfield area, or in the wide channels as fullbacks tuck in and wide players press, has been Chelsea's Achilles heel defensively. The exploitation of this space, either on the counter as Chelsea attack aggressively or from bypassing the press effectively and isolating the Chelsea back line, has proved fertile for opposition teams and is something that Lampard needs to sort out quickly. It's why many teams that do use a high press do so with the front players leading it out and three players back, compact across midfield because there must be some solidity if the press is bypassed. The complexity and physically demanding nature of Chelsea's attacking, transitional and pressing game means that it will take some time to adjust. Jorginho just isn't the right fit for the fulcrum in an intense pressing side either, however good Kante is alongside him. At the moment, Chelsea's players seem to be struggling with the aggressive nature of the press and the gaps that it leaves. If the coach doesn't adjust, expect more high-scoring games. Lampard's style and build-up and attack is good. There's a pretty clear intent and Chelsea have some exciting attacking players. Kante will alleviate some of the defensive issues simply by being the best in the world at his role, while the other players will adapt and learn. The use of Mount is not to be underestimated either. It shows not only that Lampard is willing to use young players, but is also doing it because of what they bring to the team and his style of play. That isn't simply pandering to the crowd's desire to see one of their own in the club's colours. But Jorginho is still flawed defensively in this system, and Lampard needs to achieve a balance in his preferred style and how the team need to defend. If he can continue to coax attacking intent from his team, 
while introducing more youngsters and tightening Chelsea's defensive shape, he could prove a good appointment. But currently, it's a big if. Thank you.